For those of you who have come back to watch another video on our channel, favorite gospel musician Marvin Sapp had to raise his three teenage children alone after unexpectedly losing his wife, Melinda, to colorectal cancer in 2010. He has made several public statements after her death about taking on the responsibility of parenting his children to the best of his ability, while also coping with the frequently unbearable sadness of losing his wife. Ahead of Father's Day, Marvin recently spoke candidly in a brief interview with the Huffington Post on the difficulties and joys of being a single father. In an interview with the publication, he said that when he first learned he would be raising his child alone, he was worried and astonished. I had to try to figure it out while I was trying to heal at the same time, so it was shocking, he remarked. And as a single parent, I had to set aside my own feelings in order to ensure that I was raising healthy young kids while coping with the entire process and element of grief. That meant that the question of, am I going to deal with my emotions, right now, or can I just put my emotions to the side and make sure that I'm raising healthy, productive young people, had to be actually prioritized during that time. Thus, it was a period of deciding what to prioritize and vacillating. I believe I performed fairly well. In addition to being well-rounded, healthy, and performing very well, my kids also seem to be doing well emotionally, in my opinion. Marvin's role as their single father is made much more difficult by the fact that the couple's children, who are now 17, 19, and 22, were all still in their teens when their mother passed away. He spoke candidly about his experiences helping his daughters navigate dating and their first menstrual periods, sharing some of the struggles he encountered as a young man raising two teenage girls who were becoming young women. That was the challenge, man. Boys are not like girls. Being a guy made things easier when it came to my son. But when it came to the girls, I had to exercise my maternal instincts and become a little more understanding. I also had to go shopping for items I had never had to buy before, he said to the outlet. I spent a lot of time researching and googling cramps and related topics, so that I might have a better grasp of what my girls were going through. Having those frank discussions about dating with them as well. I had to, for lack of a better phrase, man up and have those candid talks with kids about what my expectations were as their father since I couldn't rely on their mother to be there. He continued by acknowledging the unfavorable stereotype of single black fathers and underlining the need for more people in society to understand how many black men are supporting their families and being involved. Dedicated role models for their kids. Not every black man in this room has more than one child from different women. Not every black man in this place is a deadbeat parent with thousands of dollars in overdue child support that he refuses to pay and won't work to pay. However, there are those African-American males out there who are doing all in their power. Whether it's because they are widowers like me or because their wife chose to leave them and the kids behind. Many of us here are committed to becoming vital, strong, honorable guys who genuinely want to have an effect on their children's lives. Marvin also discussed the significance of parents exposing their children to worlds beyond the internet, social media, and television as well as ways to dispel myths around black single fathers and much more. The entire interview may be read here. Marvin Sapp is well aware of the significance of a man's family and faith in life. 2010 saw the loss of Melinda Prince Sapp, the mother of his three children, along with the passing of his wife, in the midst of his still highly successful singing and composing career. Shortly before the Atlanta Hawks and Portland Trailblazers game on Friday, March 3, Faith and Family Night, in the State Farm Arena basement, Sapp thought back on what helped him get through such a devastating event. I could not have survived if it weren't for my genuine, strong relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're talking about the two most significant topics when we discuss faith and family because, to me, my family is everything, Sapp said. Marvin T., 29, Michaelia, 26, and Madison, 24, are extremely fortunate to have a spiritual father who guides them through the unimaginable. Sapp, who has penned and sung a number of gospel hits, including the well-known songs The Best in Me, My Testimony, and Never Would Have Made It, feels that his children's upbringing in a religious family and church equipped them with the fortitude they would need to face life's challenges. It's important to set an example, Sapp stressed.
They were raised in a home where an actual example was present. I'm so appreciative that I could do that. As a self-confessed basketball enthusiast, Sapp said he hoped to provide some inspiration to the spectators before and after the game. Hopefully I can motivate. Wearing a white dress shirt and matching sunglasses, Sapp gave a performance at the halftime break and just after the game. After the game, a large number of the attending families stayed inside to observe and listen. Marvin Sapp is getting ready to play the lead role in the Celebrate Gospel event, which takes place every year, set to happen on February 17 in Anaheim, California at the Fantasyland Theater at Disneyland Park. Sapp talks to Ebony about his family man responsibilities and how he is getting ready for this momentous occasion. Thinking back on the influence of his song, Never Would Have Made It, which was published 17 years prior, Sapp shares with Ebony the incredible story of its conception and its almost disastrous release. Sapp is excitedly getting ready for this performance and has been expressing his delight. Disney World and Disneyland are my personal favorite travel destinations. My excitement stems from the chance to take part in this historic event. Sapp understands the value of playing some of his greatest hits, since that's what the audience want to hear when considering how musicians choose the songs for their live sets. People love what we do, so I feel compelled to sing some tunes. Every time I put together a performance, I do it with the knowledge that I have a specific audience that enjoys seeing me perform certain songs in a particular style. In addition to celebrating gospel music, Sapp views this event as a chance to share the experience with his family, who will be joining him on this momentous occasion. I'm just thrilled to be able to come and share and have fun. I'm even bringing my family, and we probably spent two times a year at Disney for the first 25 years of their lives, believe it or not. Finding balance is essential while managing ministry work, a recording artist's career, and family obligations. Sapp views things differently because he recognizes that striving for balance might result in imbalance and does not strive for it. You don't juggle because everything is about priorities and prioritizing things. If you try to juggle, you might drop something. I am first and foremost a child of God. In addition to being a recording artist, my other responsibilities include being a parent, a pastor, and everything in between. I make sure to prioritize each of these tasks appropriately. Sapp recorded a record 17 years ago, and it still has a lot of resonance with listeners today. Never Would Have Made It has been performed in clubs and sampled by other musicians, becoming viral on several occasions. If Marvin hadn't lost his wife, the song would never have been released, despite her stressing its significance and lasting influence. After 17 years, Sapp realizes why the song continues to have such a strong emotional connection with listeners. Every person has never would have made it times throughout their lives. You may be at a funeral or in the church home, wherever you may be. In all honesty, you may be in a club, and when you think back on that specific instance, declare to yourself, wow, I can honestly say that I'm stronger when I look back over my life and all that I've had to endure and come through. I'm better and wiser.